Hello friends out there in YouTube land. I am Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Today we are continuing our conversation about the Instaflex TL70 by Mint. This camera has been on review and I'm bringing to you all of the images that I've taken with it. Here are my first six rolls. Of course, roll fives over here, or roll ones over here. We've got two, three, four, five, and six. We're actually talking today about four, roll four. And this is where my photography really started to change with this camera. And it's important to show you these images in a particular order, the order that they were taken, because I want you to understand that these were test images. And I'm beginning to produce reference images with these photos. So let's start off with my little buddy right here. I've got four images. We'll go through them real quick. And I want to share with you these images because it's important to know that everybody can get a crazy response. This first one right here, my 31st image taken, you can reference the number at the very top. The 30, 31st image that I have taken with this camera right here, and I took it at F Boca. And orange light, of course, knew that it was too bright, but these are motion blur tests as well as aperture and exposure tests that you can see right here. And notice, even at f boca, which is a heart, it has chosen a very a slow aperture. There's quite a bit of motion blur right there. Compare that to the very next one that I took, two of four, which was just at f16. So a similar exposure, which is crazy considering this long aperture or long shutter speed, but um, you can tell right here that we've frozen the motion and here the motion is being shown. So that's kind of crazy. And that's actually something, if you guys have any thoughts about why we would have gotten this exposure, leave your comments down below. I definitely would like some discussion on that. However, notice that what we're seeing even with the overexposed image, we're actually seeing a very nice uh, warmth that uh, the lens renders. And that's an effect of the actual lens. You see the, the lens in this camera renders a very warm image and it renders a very low contrast or medium contrast, I guess that's better to say, with a, um, a nice saturation curve. And so that's important because you can get images that look really great. Of course, continuing on F bokeh, and this one was actually a mistake, by the way, guys. I didn't mean to shoot at F-Boca. I just forgot to change it. Notice no exposure compensation up there. So this also lets you know that everybody makes mistakes, including me. So uh, don't sweat the small stuff. If you do the silliness I do, just learn from me if you don't do the silliness I do. F-16 right here looking a lot better. It really starts to shape up at F-22, but we're still seeing quite a bit of blown out. And there's a reason that we've got some of these highlights that are blown out and things like that. It's because it's also waiting for the shadows and we've got a lot of shadows in here. Stopping down to F22. Notice what I don't have. Do you see that? There's no vignetting. And that's because I have adjusted the actual aperture very gingerly. And you can check out my common problems and how to fix them video if you are experiencing vignetting and you don't want it. Or if you'd like to have vignetting and you're not getting it. Just depends on what you like. And then by the time we get down here, I'm at F22 plus the neutral density filter. Check that out. Okay. Not so bad, huh? Now this is the type of image that'll knock your socks off. So we've developed a set of tests in these four images that allow us to see what the aperture is doing in bright sunlight with a moving subject. How cool is that? Let's continue. Moving forward, we're going to actually get over here to these four images. And I took them in this order. This image right here, number 37, failed to eject. It was an accident um, and it just did not eject. It did not eject because batteries and uh, yeah, so that can happen. So if you don't change your batteries, that can happen. But let's look at this. Moving over into mixed shade, let's talk about shade for a second because getting the best out of this camera, and if you took this picture, you would be ecstatic because it's beautiful. So this is how you do it. You have to, first of all, read the light that's around you. And we can see that we are dealing with a mixed shade environment because up this tree right here, you notice that there are highlights and hot spots on the actual tree. Notice we don't see Robert with any particular highlights on him. That's because I have placed him in the shade in the best way that I could that there weren't many highlights around that were going to hit his face. But the overall environment, it's important to be able to read. And if you see these splotchy lights coming through a thin canopy of trees, you know that you're in mixed shade. Another delineation for mixed shade is that we've got soft transitions from highlights to shadows. Okay, we don't have hard shade. This isn't direct shade, which would have hard transitions from highlights to shadows, and it would be mostly predominantly direct shade with very few highlights if you saw. But the transition from highlight to shadow would be very stark, like you might get when you walk out from underneath the canopy of trees into the bright sunlight. Here, we're in mixed shade. Mixed shade is also different than indirect shade. Indirect shade would be shade that's being caused not directly by something, but just because the area is shady. So we don't have direct shade over top of us. 
we would be like standing beside a building. You would be indirectly being shaded by this. You would have, still have quite a bit of other hard surfaces that would be reflecting light onto you. So that's indirect shade, mixed shade, and direct shade. We are in mixed shade right now. I've used F8. I've got the uh, bokeh being shown off here because I've chosen a space where my subject is separated by a distance, a very far distance from the background. That's going to help focus our viewer on the actual subject themselves as well as separate the subject from the background. And that's important. So now that we're separated from the background, you can actually begin to enjoy the picture quite a bit more. The image is sharp. It's not very contrasty. It's got a nice contrast curve though, however, and it looks great. I love the warm tones, the greens, the oranges, and the yellows in there just are absolutely beautiful. He's holding up his finger number one, so I'd remember that's the first shot. F8, this was with negative exposure compensation. This is F8 with no exposure compensation. So now we've, we're beginning to build a book of work so we can understand if you're seeing this and you don't want to stop down, hit that negative exposure compensation. I'm not going to go over any more of this because it's all the same. When we look here, this was my uh, failed to eject, so that one's included. That actually had two exposures on it because I did it twice. And then if we got rid of this, this is actually the three series. Negative exposure compensation, no exposure compensation, and then positive exposure compensation. And that's important. Guys, when you get out there, you have to do tests like this with a new camera. I mean, when I go out and I get a new camera, everybody with a digital camera, you go out and you get a digital camera, you're going to go out and shoot with it and you're going to get crazy shots to begin with. And it's only in the end that your images are going to begin looking absolutely beautiful because you've built an amount of work with it that you understand what it's doing. However, lots of times with instant cameras, you just uh, we treat them differently. We think that we're just going to go out and get everything right off the bat. And we treat them differently because these at the top end are a dollar each and you don't want to spend that. I mean, that's no fun. But you can't get to this kind of shot or these kind of reference images unless you actually take the time to learn what the camera is doing. So, as you notice, these are my reference images for mixed shade portraits. And now I've got them. So, in my book of work for this camera, I will have a reference for mixed shade in this kind of an environment. And don't forget, when you look at these images, here's a pro tip. When you're looking at my images here and over on Instagram, read the photo. And I don't mean just the words, definitely read those, but look at the composition and read what's actually happened. Here, I have taken Robert, I have separated him from the background by a distance, I've focused on him, I've centered him, I've filled the frame with the subject, and I took the picture. I'm using F8 with negative exposure compensation. Notice here that I've done the exact same thing, but the picture seems to have a slightly different um, exposure value. And there's a reason for that. Look at the composition. The composition was not exactly the same between both of them. There was no headroom to separate my son Ira's head from the top of the photo to Robert's head from the top of the photo. And the, whoever's fault that is, it doesn't matter. But if you want to know why there's a difference in the way it looks, it's not because the camera's really generated a much different look. It's because my son's got dark hair. The corners are dark, just like here, just slightly because of the canopy. The canopy is dark above him, and so there's no bright spot to separate my son from the top of the frame. So our eyes make it look like he's just jumping into the frame. And how fun is that? So there you go. Those are my pro tips. I want to remind you that I'm Robert Hamm, and if you are watching this here, you are only getting half of the story. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram for my day-to-day -day happenings with this beautiful camera, the Mint TL70. I am having an absolute blast with it. I hope you are too. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Don't forget to thank Mint for sending this to me, and I want to thank you for watching and remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.